just listened to your direct examination, Ms. Sabala, and it occurs to me there are, there are a lot of things in dispute in this case, but there are also a lot of things that are not in dispute. So let's talk about those, okay? First, you admit that you published confidential SC documents on the internet, true? No, I did not publish documents. I took excerpts specifically relating to the perks and benefits uh, that would have been retained by members of that program, and I ranted about those on FaceSpace. I didn't publish documents. Okay, so you took confidential SC information, you extracted that, and you posted it to FaceSpace, true? True. Right. And every document that you took information from and put on FaceSpace for the world to see was marked confidential, true? Well, first of all, it wasn't for the world to see. My FaceSpace account is private, um, so only specific people would have been able to see that. Um, however, I will note that most of the emails given between people in our company are marked confidential um, in order to put out or to keep things within the company. Ms. Bell, if you could do me a favor and just answer my question. My question was this. The information, the emails you looked at that you took information from and put on your, uh, your account was marked confidential, wasn't it? Yes. And it was not only just marked confidential, it was stamped in red, confidential. And you saw that, right? Yes, like I said, that appears on most of our emails. Now, the first time, Ms. Sabala, you ever told anybody in the world that you were supposed, you're having this supposed affair with Mikey, the first time you ever raise it, is with your attorney. Isn't that true? Yes. Right. So after you hire a lawyer and you're gearing up to sue my clients and you're going to sue them for this money that you're after in this case. I'm not after money. Let me finish my question. You, you're not, you, know, you realize your, your complaint says you're suing and what you want to have this jury award you I am, is money. Yes. All right. However, so, I don't need the money. I, it's more fairness that I'm after in this case. I'm, my parents are both vascular surgeons. I'm fine in that regard. So However, I think it's absolutely abysmal that this program exists and people would be paid disproportionate amounts compared to other people, and I think it's unfair, and I think that SC should be held accountable for that. So yes, monetarily, I think punitively they should be punished. So it's okay if this jury gives you fairness and not any money. That's what you just told us, no, right? No, money All right, would be so, fairness. So you are in for the money. So here's my question, Mr. Bala. Here's my point. The first time you tell anybody in the world about this alleged affair with Mike Stanhope is when you hire a lawyer and you're gearing up for this lawsuit. True? True. Right. Now, after you filed the lawsuit, and now you come into court and you want this jury to award you fairness and money, your story now is that you did not tell Mr. Sinclair about your affair with Stanhope because, and I think you just said it, you were not sure you wanted to break up Mikey's marriage. True? There were also other things on my mind that kept me from, that happened between me and Mikey that were keeping me from mentioning things to Sinclair. Let me switch topics a little bit, Ms. Sabala. Before you posted this confidential SC information on the internet, you did not go to anybody in the company, anybody, and discuss this supposed concern you had, this patriotic concern about this information regarding Seed. True? Um, I posted it on my FaceSpace account and because I was angry about it. I, this was on a Saturday. I was going to talk to Mikey on the following Monday, but that is when the investigation, sort of everything had gotten out of hand on that Sunday. Um, so on Monday, he approached me um, because I was one of the people who was suspected. Your, Your Honor, I'm going to interrupt the move to strike as non-responsive. Can the yep. court instruct the witness? Your, your objection is sustained. Mr. Listen to the question. Court reporter has to take everything down that you Thank say you. accurately because there will probably be an appeal if you win. Th Thank you, Your Honor. An unlikely uh, at that, but thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Ms. Sabala, before you did all this, before you posted this information, you, you, you were very upset at what you had read, right? Yes. A and you wanted the world to know, and you wanted to, to talk to I someone about it, right? I didn't want the world to know. I wanted my FaceSpace account to listen to me rant. 
before you published any of this information, you did not speak to anybody at SC. True? True. You were an employee of SC for how many years? Uh, six years. Six years. Five. And in those six years, you had become very familiar with the policies and procedures at SC, right? Yes. And you knew you had to follow them, right? Yes. Okay. And you knew the social media policy at SC. The written social media policy said you did not have the right to distribute company material. True? True. I don't okay. think I was but distributing. I'm allowed to talk about the terms of my employment. Well, did you just say that you didn't think you distributed anything? Is that what I heard you say? I don't think I distributed anything that was not permissible by my employment contract. I'm allowed to talk about the terms of my employment. But even though the SC policy says you can't distribute company information, that's exactly what you did, correct? Our policy also allows us to talk about the terms of our employment. Um, and I was ranting in my post about the increased pay that people would receive for getting doing the same work as me. There were, as far as you know, three employees who got increased pay, perks, and benefits. True? They're doing the same work as me. They shouldn't. And, one of the, and you got increased pay, too, didn't you? From that program? No. On occasion. Thank you, Mr. Bala. I have no further questions for you. So I got a couple of questions, a few questions to ask you. Okay, it won't take any longer than uh, than I uh, than I have to. Um, you posted confidential company emails on social media, right? I didn't post the emails. I posted excerpts that I thought were relevant okay. to my employment. And they were excerpts from confidential emails that you posted. Yes. And you knew they were confidential when you posted them. Most of our emails have confidentiality clauses okay. on them. And you understood that your employer, the company here, um, had policies that governed confidential information and disclosing it, right? Yes, but we also have stipulations regarding discussing our employment. Right, right. But if something was clearly confidential information, that wasn't within the stipulation, was it? The stipulation allows me to talk about things that reflect my employment and other people getting increased pay and benefits for the same work as right. me, I think falls under that scope. Okay. But some of the information, well, let's, let's, let's move on from that. The company had an investigation, right? Right. And you heard about the investigation. Yep. Right. You knew that the disclosure of this information on social media might cause problems for the company, right? When I initially posted it, that wasn't my intent. Um, I recognized that after the fact, my intent was only to rant on my private face space page. Whatever your intent was, you agree that you caused problems for the company by posting these confidential materials. Yes. Okay. And so there was an investigation, and you went and told your boss, right, about what you'd done. Yeah. This is on page two, lines 11 to 13. Mm -hmm. According to Sabella, tensions grew over a one week period resulting in Sabella breaking off the relationship after a particularly nasty exchange when Sabala claims Stan Hope threatened her, saying, you're done. Oh, I mean, I was already threatening to break things off uh, with him. We officially broke it off right then. I'm but. sorry. Did I read your testimony correctly yes. from your direct? Thank you very much. Now, Just give me a second here. I'm going to move on. Mr. Sinclair had you in his office. Is that right? Yes. And Mr. Sinclair fired you, right? Yes. Okay. And when you came into his office, you were confronted with some of the things that you had posted on social media, yes. right? Okay. And Mr. Sinclair told you that you had violated company policy, right? He used that as his excuse for firing me, in my opinion. Well, what, whatever was in his mind, he said you violated company policy, right? Yes, and I argued with him about and that. He said, and he said that you couldn't be trusted anymore, right? Yes, and I disagreed with him. Okay. Well, I assume you disagree because you brought this lawsuit, right? Yes. Okay. I don't um, think I did anything outside the scope of my contract. When he fired you, he gave you severance? He did. Okay. And I understand he gave you twice the severance that the policy dictates, right? Yes. I think he felt a little 
guilty about firing a good employee for, you know, breaking off something with his friend. And it's it's your claim that the excessive severance was to shut you up about this? It, he said it was to ease my transition. I think it was a little bit to shut me up and because I think he felt guilty. Right. You, you cashed the check, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and I take it that Mr. Sinclair uh, didn't say to you, I want you to agree to some kind of confidentiality agreement, did he? He didn't no. say that. Okay. He didn't say, I want you to agree you're not going to sue us, right? No. Okay. Um, didn't ask you to sign anything? No. Okay. And isn't it true that you didn't tell Mr. Sinclair that day about the affair that you claim you were having with Mr. Stanhope? Isn't that true? That is true. Okay. Um, have you heard of a fellow named Edward Snowden? No, Who, I haven't. Okay. D do you know that Mr. Snowden is someone who's been in the news lately? Did you know that? Uh, well, if I haven't heard of him, okay. I don't think I... And did you that. know that Mr. Snowden made the news because he posted secrets and confidential information of the United States? Did he post on, documents? Let me, let me finish, Sorry. please. Uh, on social media. Did he, he post documents? Uh, I think he did. I didn't post documents. I posted g very generic information mm -hmm. about what I had read. Okay, well, let's talk, about, let's talk about this a little bit, okay, about Mr. Snowden and you, all right? Um, you posted excerpts from documents, right? I, the ones relevant to the pay scale of the employees right. that would be in this program. Right. And you also told me earlier that you posted things from excerpts from the documents that were confidential, right? That's what you told me. They are confidential, however, my employment stipulates that I am allowed to talk about the terms of my employment. I'm allowed right. to talk about things relevant to that, even if it's company did, information. Did you, did you know that Mr. Snowden posted information, confidential information about government activities on social media? Did you know he did that? Again, it's a, it's a different issue. I work for a private corporation. He posted federal government information. My documents weren't marked that they were federal government documents. It was emails between Sinclair and Stanhope. If, if they had said US government classified, you know, I might not have glanced through them. You posted, it, you posted. It's a different issue. You posted information about government activities, about Project Seed, didn't you? I posted the information that is relevant to my employment. You posted information about Project Seed or not? I posted generic information about the basis of the program in order to and that was about, show that, sorry. That was about a government issue. That was about government activity, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Ms. Sabal, I want to talk a little bit about your function at my client's company. You worked for Stupendous Creations for how long? I worked there for six years. And your position was what? I was a web advertising programmer. Okay. And in that position, uh, you were given access to confidential information, correct? Yes. On a weekly basis, we would have projects. We've worked for the government before. A lot of our stuff is confidential, yes. And you understand the importance of protecting confidential information? Yes, we typically don't send emails that are confidential outside the company, show them to anyone outside the company. We don't need to, you don't need, someone doesn't need to spell that out for you, right? Correct. Now, in this particular case, you gained access to three emails, is that right? Yes. These emails were between your boss, right, the CIO, Chief mm -hmm. Information Officer, correct? Mikey, yes. Guy on the executive committee, yes. right? High up position. Yes. And the email was between him and the CEO of the company, Xavier Sinclair, correct? Yes. The chief of the organization. Yes. And these emails, you, get, you gained access to them from Mr. Stanhope's personal computer, right? Yes. He allowed you, me to use his MacBook. That's great. Did he allow you to read those emails? Uh, it was already open. We have a web-based email Did service. Did he allow you to read those I emails? I opened a web browser and they Did were already open. Counselor, would you please do your examination from the... Uh, Podium yes, there, unless you have permission to approach the witness. Ms. Sabella, did you ask for permission to read those emails? I asked for permission to use the computer, and the emails were already open. 
And I did not call him then and ask him if I could proceed to read the emails. I didn't intend to read them. When you saw the two and the from, and those were between the two top gentlemen in this organization, not you, why did you continue to read them? Well, when I was glancing through, I actually saw the message part before I then backtracked and looked at the to and from. You saw that the emails were marked confidential, correct? Yes. You saw that they were marked in red letters. You see the red? See the red up on the screen? I know what red is. Okay. And you know red means what? It's to get your attention. Yes. And you saw that those emails referred to government classified memos, correct? It did not say United States government classified, if that's what you're asking. It, it referred to classified memos. Did it refer to classified In memos? In email, yes. Do you know what classified means? Yes. What does it mean to you? It means that it's on a need to know basis. Does it mean for its public dissemination? No, but Mikey has shared confidential work related information with me before. Um, Confidential. Pretty intimate, so. Confidentially. Yeah, he's told me things that go up on the, with the higher ups in the office. He's never shared confidential information with you so you could post it on your face base page, has he? I didn't, I took excerpts from the has emails. He? I didn't post the emails themselves. Okay. Has no, he, but I was angry. Has he ever shared confidential information with you so that you could post it on face base, ma'am? Has he ever done that? Yes or no? No. All right, and you told Mr. Stanhope that you felt you had to stop the company at all costs. Right? Your I words. I didn't say that I had to stop the company at all costs. I thought that if there was such a program, it should be stopped at all costs. Okay. Program had to be stopped no matter what the cost. Doesn't Quote, say unquote. I was the one to do it. Did I read that right? That, at all that, costs. That including your job. Is, including your job. That would be a cost. Including. If I were the one to do it, yes. Okay. You were the one to do it. I didn't think that I would be the one to stop the company at all costs. I didn't expect what I did to go viral. I don't think I did anything wrong. I talked about the terms of my employment. Okay. That's allowed in our company's policy. All right. Um, did you ever consider talking about the terms of your employment with the department that is in charge of the terms of your employment, HR? Did you ever consider doing that? I considered it after the fact, of course. After the fact. You never once went to HR, in fact. Like he told you, me to be quiet about everything. He said know, he was going to take care of it. Mr. Stan, Mr. Stanhope said you made a grave mistake, didn't he? He said you made a big mistake. Yes, but he then he, he was told me to, try to, to help be quiet you. about it. Well, he I, said he was going to talk to counsel with the company and try to help you. He didn't, didn't he? tell me he was specifically going to talk to counsel. He decided he was going to talk to counsel, but he told me he would take care of it. All right, let's talk about your relationship with... Mr. Stanhope, you're mm -hmm. claiming here to this jury that you engaged in a sexual relation, yes, an affair with a married man for the last year or two. Is that right? Yes. Which one is it? A year or two? Uh, we've been sexually active for a year. Uh, before that, it's hard to say when we officially began dating. It's complicated with an affair. And your position is it was a consensual relationship. That's your position in this jury. Yes. Okay. You enjoyed the relationship. Yes. You never um, once um, engaged in the relationship for money or promotion or anything. Correct? No, of course not. Okay. The, and my parents are. The truth. The truth of the matter is, ma'am. The truth of the matter is, ma'am, is there is you have no evidence of this relationship other than your word, right? I. Mikey and I. Is that correct, ma'am? He's ma lying about it. Your Honor, can I get a yes or no on this? Yes. Is that, a, is that an objection? You My, use text messages? Is that an objection, Counselor? Yes. Sustained. Do you text? Yes. Can, can you show this jury one text that would support your claim of a year relationship with Mr. Stanhope? One text, just one. I mean, we can were you show very, us one? We were very careful about things because he had a wife and he was handling her separation. Is that a no? Is that a no? You can't show us one text, can you? I could probably show you some messages or something. Today is like proof want. day. Do you have anything today on proof day? You could subpoena my phone records if you like. No, we're in trial, ma'am. Did you have the burden of proof in this case? Did you bring one email, one test text message, one document that supports your claim that you had a the relationship? The man got me pregnant. Yes Is that or proof no? enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> have you had the uh, test to determine whose kid it is. I lost the baby after the stress of this case. I'm clinically depressed now because of this. Ma'am, 
You had an exit interview with the CEO. Did you tell him once that you had a relationship with Mr. Stanhope? Of course not. It's Mikey's yes or job no, to. Yes I didn't or want to no. ruin Did Mikey's you tell marriage. Him once? I wanted him to be the one That's to tell no. his wife. That's a no. no. The first time my client found out about this alleged relationship was after you left, after you hired a lawyer. Yes or no, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Bala, I, I want to go back to when you first began uh, employment with SC. Um, you were hired approximately two years before your, your termination, is that correct? No, I was hired out of college. Okay. And um, when you were hired, you didn't have a written agreement with uh, SC, is that correct? What do you mean? Well, you didn't have a contract. Somebody, you were interviewed, they liked you, and they brought you on. You never signed a contract in terms of your oh, terms. Oh, we, we, have, we have employment contracts. My Understood. employment contract talks about you know, company policy and sure. everything, of course. Sure, and one of the company policies that I know that you are familiar with is the company policy which limits employees' right to distribute information from SC on social websites. You're aware of that, are you not, ma'am? Yes, but I'm also aware of the fact that we're allowed to discuss the terms of our employment. Sure, and we're going to talk a little bit about that because I know that is what you've told us in pretrial deposition is what you think that you did by releasing yes. that information. Is that right, ma'am? Yes. Yeah, um, l let me ask you a few other questions here. Um, you admitted in your pretrial deposition, and you remember when you took that, correct? Your lawyer was with you, mm -hmm. right? Um, and a question was asked of you both at the time of the investigation, uh, which led to your dismissal and during your pretrial deposition, um, that Mike Stanhope, in fact, allowed you to use his personal computer, correct? Yes. Okay. And the case that we're here for today, on the day that you looked at his computer, you opened up and you found emails and documents which are the subject of the disclosure in this case. Am I correct? I asked Mikey if I could use his computer and his email was already up on a web yeah. browser. And while you asked Mike whether you could use his computer, you didn't ask Mike whether you could read his emails, did you ma'am? Oh, of, of course not, but sure. and they're you, already up. And you didn't ask Mike whether you could disseminate documents contained on his personal computer, did you, ma'am? I didn't post documents. I posted the excerpts that I thought were relevant to why I was angry sure. about the program. And you didn't ask him whether you could post those excerpts either, did you, ma'am? No. Sure. Um, you have very, very strong feelings about, about governmental invasion um, in people's lives, don't you? I think I have uh, feelings about it comparable to what any person would have sure. if they realized that they were going to have their opinion swung by fake posts. Sure. And, and that's a personal opinion that you have, correct? That I think it's wrong? Sure. Yes. Yeah. And let's be clear that at no time did anybody at SC ever tell you that you were not entitled to have your own personal opinions, did they? No, no, they didn't tell me that. At no time did anybody at SC ever tell you that you couldn't join a group and express a personal opinion, did they? True. At no time did you ever tell him about the consensual sexual relationship that you had with Mr. Stanhope, correct? Yes or no, ma'am? No, I did not tell Xavier. I didn't want the... I wanted Mikey to be the one to expose the affair yeah. to his wife, who he was on the rocks with, by the way. Your, uh, your first... I didn't want to be the one to do it. I'm sorry, I didn't allow you to answer. I'm sorry, your I, I didn't. Your first formal notice to the world of a claim of sexual harassment came in a lawsuit claiming money damages. Isn't that true, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Um, now, ma'am, you have told us that you are uh, seeing uh, psychologists and mental health care professionals, is that correct? Yes. And uh, fair to tell this jury that despite being seen at mental health facilities, um, not one doctor has been identified in this case as an expert witness on your behalf. Isn't that true, ma'am? I'm clinically depressed now. I have prescriptions if you'd like to look at them. I, I wasn't clear on my question. Let me, let me see if I can have you answer it. Fair to tell this jury that during this trial, you will be offering the testimony of no doctor, nor have you offered the affidavit of any mental health, men, any mental health care professional, which, uh, which supports your testimony, your allegation that your depression and mental illness is somehow related to your firing. Isn't that true? Yes. Yeah. And um, in fact, 
um, although you claim you are unable to work, you haven't made an application for any form of disability. Am I correct, ma'am? I was fired from my job and lost my one-year lover in the same week span. You don't think that that's grounds for me to be depressed? But ma'am, we have now been, we are many months removed, and you are clearly able to use a computer. Am I correct? You do use a computer? Yes. You, you, matter of fact, you are able to post your feelings about this event on face space to tell the world yes. what's going on, aren't you? And my question again to you, ma'am, is despite your allegation of your inability to return to work following this incident, you have not made an application to any type of disability to claiming that you are unable to work, correct? I've had other things on my mind. I understand that. And in fact, the same question that I asked you about a mental health care professional, fair to tell this jury that during this trial, despite your allegation of your inability to be able to return to work, there won't be one health care professional testifying on your behalf to tell this jury that you're unable to work. Will there, ma'am? I have been dealing with an absolutely inordinate amount of stress in the past few months, and you, you don't think that that's incredibly apparent? Do I seem like the kind of person right now that someone would want to hire? I am a miserable human being right now. Well, I can't get another job. I... And when you, have you, when you applied for another job, have you told them that you filed a wrongful termination suit and a sexual harassment suit, ma'am? I can't apply for another job because of my depression. Thank you very much. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ted Share. They, they say that uh, cross-exam is, is mainly instinct, and I think that your instinct uh, in this instance was to tread carefully with this woman. And so you ended up doing a good job, though, in terms of also asking the yes-no questions and maintaining control. And I thought, like, for instance, when you started, you really, I think, uh, did an excellent job of referring her to her prior testimony and kind of hewing her to that line. Um, Mr. Santanello, you, you were a bulldog, uh, which I really enjoyed. And as I was watching the monitor, I think everybody here in the audience really enjoyed. Uh, your instinct was to push and uh, to take it as far as you felt like you could go. And you got a lot of good information out of her. And I thought what you did especially well was you basically seeded her cross with your closing argument and set up your closing quite well. Of course, you did end up catching the tripwire of the twist, um, you know, but that is, of course, the danger of, you know, being an aggressive cross-examiner, but at the same time, I mean, overall, I thought you did a fantastic job. Uh, and then, Mr. Shear, uh, you too, I thought you did quite well. See, now, you were, you sort of hewed the line in between aggressiveness and care. Dana, I thought, sort of taking a point of view that you're obviously going to have women on a jury, you're, everyone's cross-examining women, and you're all men. Um, I thought, I was looking a little bit at how aggressive everybody got with the witness, and I noticed that you didn't really get aggressive with her until she became aggressive with you, with, which I thought was great. And also, I like today is proof day. That was really good. Um, and then, Ted, you were the only person that uh, touched on damages, and I thought you really did a great job of that. It became very clear. Even, even if you were a little bit worried about the liability stuff, I would have said, oh, yeah, but you know, where are the damages? So everyone did a great job. Thank you.